So I wanted to speak to the romantic narrative that is pretty much dominating the twin flame community online because there's a lot of misinformation out there that is keeping divine feminines stuck in cycles of suffering. So if you're newer to this journey, what I share here may trigger you. If you've been on this journey for a while, it may resonate with you more. But wherever you're at, even if it triggers you, that does not mean the message is not meant for you because triggering is part of this journey if you have not figured that out yet. (laughs) So what I'm going to share with you, just take it as it resonates for you and I would love to hear about it in the comments. So the romantic narrative is rooted in fallacy because... Your twin flame journey is your ascension journey and it is your journey to oneness. The romantic narrative as its basic principle says that there is a you and a them. There is a you and an other, right? Your twin flame. So there's you and there's them, which is two which is duality, which is separation consciousness. This is the journey to oneness and unity consciousness. On this journey, you are transcending the dualistic mind that's rooted in separation, fear-based consciousness and moving into heart-based unity consciousness, aka oneness or unconditional love. So at the very, very basic foundation of the romantic narrative that states there is a you and there is a them, right there, it is flawed. It is rooted in separation consciousness and keeping you stuck. The second fallacy with this is that what's happening between you and them is not supposed to be happening according to your egoic personality self. So there is a lack of acceptance of what is. So the first fallacy is that there's a you and a them. The second fallacy is that whatever's happening between you and them should not be happening. And as a result of that, as a result of rejecting what is and not accepting what is, you end up in this addictive cycle of clinging and grasping outside of yourself in order to feel whole and complete and you are clinging and grasping either physically mentally emotionally or energetically to this apparent other person that appears in 3d reality as your twin flame which is really your soul in another body so it's really your other self but it appears separate in the 3D world. However, the 3D world is not really as it seems because everything is oneness appearing as you, your twin flame, your dog, your cat, the tree, the flowers, everything. You are the divine presence the animating presence that animates all things. Oneness, also referred to as unconditional love, that animates all things, including your twin flame. And so the romantic narrative that keeps you focused on a you and a them, or a you and another, is is completely... Uh, rooted in separation consciousness which you are here to transcend so this is the journey to oneness not two-ness it's a journey to oneness not otherness but the egoic mind is like an expert salesman and it will always try to sell you on otherness it will also always try to sell you on a narrative or a story or a timeline 
that keeps you focused in the past, ruminating about what's happened in the past, or on future projections of what you would like to happen in the future or what's supposed to happen in the future or what is your your hope or expectation for the future. Said who? Said your personal, small, separate self. Because it's your personal, small, separate self that is ruminating in the past or projecting into the future with personal expectations, preferred outcomes, and clinging to what is going to make you feel more whole, worthy, and complete. So, when the egoic mind dangles a carrot in front of you, such as the romantic narrative, that's the biggest carrot it has, it keeps your focus and your awareness on everything but the present moment, which is where you are now. You are here now as divine presence. And the paradox here is there's not even a path. It's not even a quote-unquote journey. But that's not useful here because it's only realized in hindsight that you never had to go anywhere or do anything to be whole or complete. So you go down this rabbit hole and down this journey of suffering only to come home to yourself, which you've never left. You've always been home. You've always been here. You've always been divine presence. And so it's a beautiful journey, but there's, it's also a painful journey. But I just want to say that the suffering is a gateway and portal to your ascension. There are many spiritual masters and that have suffered greatly on their path to self-realization not everyone has their twin flame as a catalyst in order to move into self-realization in this lifetime. But your soul chose your twin flame as a catalyst. There are plenty of people waking up all over the globe that do not have a twin flame experience going on. The twin flame phenomena is not part of their, their journey. And some people just wake up spontaneously but you chose your twin flame on a soul level as part of your catalyst. And the egoic mind is going to spoon feed you the addictive storyline and narrative in order to keep you hooked. And when you get the rug pulled out from under you and your heart broken wide open and all of your core wounds exposed, raw and vulnerable... And all of your fears of abandonment and not feeling good enough and being unworthy and unlovable and all of it. When all of that is exposed, there is fear and a lot of pain that sets in and the ego wants to grasp and cling to whatever it can to soothe that pain. But all you end up doing is putting band-aids over the pain the longer you keep your focus off of yourself and on external validation. This is your journey to oneness and unconditional love. Oneness is not two-ness. You may have heard the term non-duality. Non-duality means not two. This is the journey to oneness which is not separation consciousness. Oneness would be unity consciousness. And you're probably familiar with the term separation and union. And what that really means on this journey is moving from separation consciousness into unity consciousness. And realizing that you are one with life itself because you are life itself. You are unconditional love. You are the love that you've been seeking outside of yourself this whole time in another person and even prior to your twin flame in other relationships and other forms of validation. All of this comes up on this journey and you get to reflect on all of it and you get to see how you've been running from your true self this whole time. 
And so ultimately, your divine mirror, your twin flame, your other self is going to mirror all of this back to you because of the unconditional love that is you and that is them and that is all things at your core. Because unconditional love is here to experience itself through you. And because of this, these triggers are here. They are blessings in disguise, pointing you towards areas where you are yet to be free and liberated. And on this journey, you will eventually make the conscious decision to choose truth and freedom above everything else, including this connection. Which I say connection in air quotes because connection implies that there are two things that can come together and connect two people coming together. And that's not the case. This isn't even really a quote connection. But you will make the decision to choose your truth and freedom above all else. And you will let go and surrender on this journey and you will move into non-attachment. And when you read about or learn about other ancient spiritual wisdom, you hear these terms come up, letting go, surrendering, right? Non-attachment, which is what you're going through right now. You are learning to let go. And what does let go mean? You are letting go of resistance. Resistance to what, you might ask. You are letting go of resistance to what is. Resistance to the present moment. You're moving into divine acceptance and surrendering to life as it is right now. Which is where all of your power lies. Which is you. You are here now. Be here now. There is no future moment. The future is a projection in your mind. The past is over. You have this right now. The romantic narrative that's keeping you stuck is keeping you stuck in a future projected moment which never comes and doesn't exist. It's a trap that's keeping you from ascending on your journey. And eventually, when the suffering gets great enough and the pain of the chase becomes too painful, chasing physically, energetically, mentally, or emotionally, you stop running from yourself. Essentially, you and your twin flame are both runners. You're running from your true nature. And they're running from you as a result of that. Because you are true nature. And they're running from you as you run from you. So this is just a time to get real with yourself. This is an addictive narrative that is rooted in codependency, attachment, fear ego, mind, and separation consciousness. Real love is not a romantic emotion or attachment, although loving emotions can arise with unconditional love, loving expressions, loving, you are the loving, you are the loving. That's what you are at your core. But this 3D romantic narrative that is told in the Twin Flame community is rooted in codependency and attachment. And unconditional love is not attachment. Unconditional love is love. It's divine acceptance. It is love and acceptance of what is. Unconditional love is freedom. If, for example, if you truly love your twin flame, you would not want to possess them. 
wanting to possess them or needing them to come back is attachment. It's ownership. Unconditional love is not owned. You can only be it. It is not owned by anyone. It is not attachment. Unconditional love would allow someone else to be free and make their own decisions, even if that decision is not choosing you. So how free would you want your twin flame to be? Unconditional love would say, free enough to not choose you. Anything else is attachment. And you're here to transcend the 3D model of romantic love that is rooted in neediness or codependency. And that's not to say that all romantic relationships are rooted in codependency or neediness. That's not the case. But unconditional love is rare. Most people enter relationships where they get married and one minute they love and then the next minute they don't love and they get divorced and like the love ends. Love doesn't end. Unconditional love is what is. There is no ending and there is no beginning to it. It is. It can be interchanged with oneness if you'd like. There is nothing else. There is only love. It cannot be lost. It cannot be gained. It cannot be owned. And it cannot be possessed. It is free. Free to be. And as you let go of the resistance and move into divine acceptance and to surrender to what is on this journey you begin to open up your heart to this unconditional love. And this is when you really take your power back and the journey begins to shift. And you're not meant to know the ending. You're not meant to know how this unfolds. Love doesn't need an an expectation to hold on to or cling to or grasp to. When you are abiding in the love that you are and in your divine presence, there is no next moment to even think about. There is only now. There is only life happening. There is only loving happening now. The stories fall away and you become it. You be it. You are it. You can only be now you can only be love now you can only be here now everything else is a projection the words that I've been sharing with you are not meant for your mind they are meant for you to hear through the ears of your heart and if they've resonated with you then let them plant seeds that will blossom into something beautiful your only job is to trust and surrender to that I would also like to add for divine feminines that have experienced very toxic behavior from their twin flame that both twins on this journey are running from unconditional love aka their true nature and both twins suffer in the 3d from the same core wounds but they respond to this very differently and so they mirror these wounds back to each other for the purpose of your soul ascension You are two ends of the same pole, two sides of the same coin. And the purpose of this journey is not to 
necessarily be with your twin flame. The purpose of this journey is your self-realization into heart-centered unity consciousness. And as you embody this and you begin to abide from this divine presence, the essence of who you truly are, this unconditional love, you realize that it is the underpinning of all of creation and all of 3D reality and you begin to see with true spiritual vision beyond the duality of good or bad or right or wrong. And so if you're experiencing bitterness or anger, resentment, jealousy, fear, things like that, this is an indicator that you are identified and operating from the small separate self that feels it can be wounded, betrayed, or hurt which couldn't be further from the truth because you are love. You are the unconditional love and divine presence which is whole and complete and cannot be wounded. So this can be another egoic trap to get stuck in the back and forth in your head about the right and the wrong doings. This is duality. And this does not mean that in the 3D reality, as you function as a human, that you do not operate from healthy discernment. The unconditional love or infinite intelligence that you are is very wise. And an awakened woman has no problem setting and maintaining healthy boundaries and having healthy discernment because she's not attached and she understands her divine worth. She knows herself to be that. And so this journey is not about settling for behaviors that come from less than love. But it's also not about getting wrapped up in the narrative of right and wrong, good and bad. This is about developing true spiritual vision that sees beyond the illusion of separation, which can only be felt and seen as you move into abidance in your divine presence, the essence of who you truly are. So I just wanted to share that as well. I hope that resonates for whoever needed to hear that. If you would like support on this journey, there are a few options for you. You can check out the link wherever you're listening to this. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.